Yo. Hey. What's up, man? How you doing? Let me make sure this is gonna stay. Yeah. He's fucking. I think that'll stay. Okay. <laughs> What's new? Um. <laughs> I guess like. I don't know. I f- I feel like I'm more so just like living life as opposed to like bookmarking my existence with like various projects and the status of them and stuff right so it's hard for me to like i mean i could rattle off everything you know but (laughs) yeah yeah um i can't believe you guys are like both pretty much same time awesome sarah's here can you You see sarah we always like to come at the same time here yeah (laughs) man you come in swinging yeah I can't, I didn't know, I didn't know that there was anyone else because it's on some sort of setting where um, I can only see me. I know you can change that. I wouldn't change that setting. That's all I'd want to look at too. Um, (laughs) I think I'm going to go for, oh, avatars. I'm going to make it look really. Well, you want, we can change the, like we did with the school thing. We can. Can you can you make it so I can see everyone at once? Yeah, so you can only see me. Well, it switches back and forth. Okay, let's see if this this should work. Let's let's try, even if we just tried this one first. Can you see everybody? We're art. We're art. This is funny. You should leave this one. This is cool. (laughs) I think so. We kind of it kind of just looks like like a tacky Airbnb. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> exactly but now so you can see everybody now i can cool cool well before we decide on this one for sure um there's this one well we're gonna like them all that's weird that's let's change that one i get it it's like a school yeah okay here we go we got the boardroom oh wow we're gonna about to fire a bunch of people yeah <laughs> this is weird <laughs> that only is two people um this is the one we used yet was that yesterday or was that yeah two days we, ago? we did yeah that was yesterday no maybe it was two days ago i honestly <laughs> i don't know if i remember I'm, I'm, to- trying. I'm totally losing track of time all right let's do i think the i think the art one was the best one i i agree okay let's let's do that i mean we are art so this is perfect now, we're you're, all well hung. You're, you're over there. You, you guys switch sides. That's cool. All right. Good. We're all set. So, um, before we get started, I have an, an announcement to make. I'm not having a baby. I wish I was. I'm not having a baby. <laughs> uh, I'm reopening my business in September. Uh, I cut hair. So, yeah. I'm moving out of my garage. <laughs> back into the shop I used to be in and uh, quitting everything. I mean, I'm still going to do this, but no more like bullshit jobs. I can't take them anymore. Like I'm painting with my friend, painting houses, and I fucking hate it so much. It's like soul sucking work. Um, so, do you, do yeah. You think, I, congratulations, first of all. Thank you. Do you think that the the government is going to come after you like with a new like maybe monkey pox or something do you think that there's going to be something else that they're going to say you can't cut hair anymore are yes. you worried about that and i have thought about that and that that actually happens that's the reason i stopped working i i closed it down in the first place because um when i came back from the you know what was supposed to be two weeks turned into i don't know a fucking year and a half yeah. um it was difficult to like get people in again because people were either scared to come out or they bought a fucking clipper on ebay you know and shaved their heads and or whatever whatever the reason was so i couldn't go and pay rent again um but this time i have like such a i have such a big clientele now that if that were to ever happen again um so i'm subletting the place it's like a part like it's almost like a ghost kitchen in a way where I take a. I'm in the basement, but the whole basement's mine. But I'm I'm renting it from upstairs. Mm. So if she has to close upstairs, that's that's not on me. Like I don't. I wouldn't get affected financially. She would. You could have I some would. like 
like monkey pox like fight club down there just whatever <laughs> yeah I like yeah it. a bad idea yeah it's really cool it's kind of like a new york city kind of like underground place and i really like regretted leaving it i had to at the time because i didn't have enough money to like keep it going on my own um but i've been working the past couple years and saved up some money and now i'm gonna go back into it and i have people behind me now like when i first started i had nobody you know i started from scratch um and if worst case scenario ever did happen i'll still have this set up in the garage like people can... i think that's gonna be good man for your uh mental health i, I oh, i've been having yes. those conversations a lot with like my manager and, and and shit like that uh just for whatever happens with me in regards to work i'm like i'm not doing any more weird like covid videos or at home shit i'm just so sick of it i'm like like for you it's like you want to fucking leave your house go into a building that's delegated for this and like it just makes you feel less crazy man because sometimes it's like if you work you you do this in the garage you do that in the garage and then you just walk in your home it's almost like you're in a prison cell and you're like okay well yeah i'm reading about auto mechanics but i also shit and masturbate and <laughs> eat here right you gotta kind of go around for different things i think yeah and that's do a good point mike are you gonna continue to masturbate other places or will you just do that at your own house now yes <laughs> yes no like that's the thing too i am so tired of just jerking off in the garage or outside <laughs> now i can go you know i can go in the car take a ride whatever i gotta do <laughs> that's wonderful <laughs> um that's good that's good you know it's i love being home of course but yeah it does become like, like in a way like a prison cell um like i have this here and it'll be good for backup in case anything does ever happen uh but the problem here is that all right great i have my my people i have like let's say 50 people that's all i'll ever have because i can't put a sign outside i'm in a residential a residential area and mm -hmm. technically i don't have a license to do this in here um so i can't advertise for it and bring other people in so that limits what i can make you know i can make pretty decent money an hour doing something i enjoy doing if i just get out there back out there and do it you know so i'm excited <laughs> you almost have to like tell your clients like what what is it uh you know eat, eat foods that makes your hair grow faster yeah like if you need some money you know what i mean right just right keep that well fucking hair just going you know i'll tell you this one thing i definitely learned over the past couple of years doing it here is that like my home time is my home time i'm not sitting at a shop waiting for people to come in like mm -hmm. I'm at my house hanging out. I don't want to people ringing my doorbell or anything like that. So what I do is every time someone comes in, I set them up for the next appointment, which I've never mm -hmm. done before, but I'm going to adapt that now to the business. So I know what the fuck I'm doing and I can make my own hours around that. I don't have to be there all the time. Yeah. That was one of the problems being there for 10 hours a day or whatever mm -hmm. is that you're not busy the whole time, you know? Um, I think that's like a smart, a smart hustle is to like, sort of force the people to come back, like give them an, an appointment. I had two recent medical issues. One was when I had like the jaw, the tube in my jaw, and then my eye. Yeah. And both of these people, since I pay just out of pocket, because I insurances, I, I just don't understand it, you know? Yeah. So it's like, the guy's like, all right, here's this, take this, come back in two weeks. And then it's another $450. And then I come back. He's like, it looks good, but come back so I can check it out again. And it, he just like, I swear to God, it's like bloodletting. If these motherfuckers had their way, I would just, I would just keep coming back and stuff like that. Right. But I think uh, obviously yours is not as sinister, but it's still the same business model. Yes, exactly. And it, it took me a while to figure that out. It's like tattoos. Like when you go get a tattoo done, like i'll come back in like a month and i'll touch up the lines you know you know damn well i'm not just going to come and get the lines touched up i'm going to get something else um, yeah touch anyone who gets their tattoos touched up i think that's that's like insane to me yeah. i don't like that <laughs> so you don't do it no, no no if the tattoo starts to fade uh i just like i'm like okay that means like i'm like alive or something i don't know like yeah. what it's like what am i gonna do like I don't know. It it just seems like uh, just the price of 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 life, you know. Yeah, 
I think no, everything, absolutely. you know, everything changes. I, sometimes I think I'm tired because I have like crow's feet, right? And I think, oh, I'm just tired today. And then I realized the other day, I'm like, I just fucking have them now, you know? Yeah. Right. What am I, you know? And and sure, I have some shit in my arms that just, it, it looks like it was done by like a blindfolded child, you know? I don't care. <laughs> you know, I say natural all the way, honestly. Like, yeah. you know, just let it be. Let it, let it do what it's going to do. Uh, when people start getting plastic surgery and stuff in their 50s and stuff, you look stupid, okay? It mm. looks stupid. And it never looks good. There has never been a time where I'm like, you know what? Unless it's something like they got into an accident and they fucking crushed their nose or whatever. Yeah. Right. So you, you're going to want to get that fixed for your own self-confidence, right? Um, I think the only but, person that looks good is um, is Mickey Rourke, just because it, it, it looks so <laughs> insane. Yeah. It's like a yeah. thing all on its own, you know what I mean? It's like in it he's not like fucking hiding it right you know yeah. he's like if he starts sweating it's like his ear starts like one ears starts to droop <laughs> yeah. and like black is coming out of his hair but he doesn't yes. give a fuck dude yeah i like it yeah he's definitely definitely like frankenstein together he looks like <laughs> yeah. sarah Mike, you should do uh you should do groupons for your hair salon yeah you know like say buy this buy this package up front i i thought about that but you know what happens with those things you get you get those kind of people and no offense like i use groupon you know what i mean like i'll i'll buy stuff on groupon and i'll go use it at a restaurant or whatever um but it's like a one-time deal like they get it just to get the five dollars off or whatever it is and then you never see them again you know so it's like Mm. it's people like that they just kind of jump around to get deals they don't really stick with one person you know what i mean so i don't really want those kind of people but it's a good idea it's a good idea and i have thought about it yeah <laughs> it's, it's a good idea if both parties like respectfully participate i suppose yes yeah. yes um sarah do you have any tattoos i don't not one i have this virgin skin not one wow did I've you? got some scars. You got what? I have I have some scars, but some scars. No, no tattoos. Hey, that counts. That counts. <laughs> you guys, you guys both. Well, Chris, do yeah. you have any? Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, thinking about it, maybe. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And Mike, I feel like I see a half sleeve on you. Okay, so my my tattoos are all fucked up. Yeah. So this is they're all old. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show this in this camera here. This, oh yeah, here we go. So this is a cover up of a million different fucking things. So this is what I like to call a disaster. This is a mess. If you can see it, <laughs> it's just kind of black and blobby in, in some areas. There's faces in there, but they're faded. Um, it's mostly like Japanese style. This is all bullshit. This was supposed to be something, and it never, I got a fucking spider web here. It was supposed to be something, and never turned out to be anything. It looks um, like you're wearing like a just a thermal under your shirt. Is what yeah, it looks like right, that. right. It's like it's almost. I might as well have just done it black. You know, people yeah. do like the whole black sleeve. I might as well have done that. Um, um, one day when I have some money, maybe I'll get it fixed up. But to be honest with you, I don't really care. You know, you can't. You already said you don't like any of that plastic <laughs> surgery shit, and I will call you out. Yeah. Also, I mean, we are artwork right now in this Airbnb, we are. so we are. I don't have um, anything to show for it. <laughs> I actually once got tattoo removal done on this arm because it was mm-hmm. like this kind of like black tribal flame shit. Don't ask. And I kind of wanted to like lighten it up so I could go over it easier. You know what I mean? Um, and I had a, an allergic reaction to it. Like instantly. Yeah. To the laser. To the laser. Yes. Uh, that's weird to be allergic to lasers. Yeah, I, well, maybe not allergic reaction, but I had a, a reaction to it. Like, mm. um, they did the whole session right on like the bottom half of my arm. It took mostly fifty seconds. You know, it hurt more than the tattoo going on. Mm-hmm. And, um, like you could take off your glasses because you got to put these glasses on because it's a fucking radioactive laser. You know. And they take you take them off and they show you and it's like the the pigment's gone the, the ink is gone, and then it comes right back in like a minute later. Yeah. Um, and you have to do you know for black especially a certain amount of sessions before it's really starts lightening up. 
Um, yeah, that's that's like an appointment you you have to go back to. Yes, once. yes. I I did that once too. It's horrible. It's really you horrible. did it. I, okay. Yeah, I did it on my face, which was wow, horrible. Yeah, because I, I just had these like little dots by my eye, mm. and um, I had to wear the goggles obviously, but I didn't get like the cool like playboy bunny suntan pink ones yeah. i had these like weird like iron lung like big brass ones because they could have fucking blasted my eyeball out so right um but yeah i it felt like uh getting hit with like a lightning bolt or something mm -hmm. it was so alarmingly painful that it's almost and it's so quick your your body sends a pain signal to your brain but then it's like so painful You've never felt pain like that. So then your brain's like, what was that? And then by the right. time it, you're like that hurt, it's already over. So it's like this really almost like psychedelic sensation. I think when I think about it, it could be used as like a form of torture because imagine <laughs> if someone was like in a chair and you're like, where is it? And you just were lasering their arm. Right. They tell you anything. Yeah, right. Where's and, your and where's your tattoo? We're gonna blow it off. Yeah, and imagine yeah. if they had like imagine if they had like serious like artwork, like something that took fucking a year to do, like a crazy sleeve, and you start removing it. <laughs> that would be yeah. that would definitely be torture. Um but so this is this is like what you would buy a group on for. Like tattoo. Yeah, yeah right, right. Right. Yeah. 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 A hundred dollars off, yeah, or something like that. I remember it being like four hundred bucks a session, it was something crazy. And uh, they, you know, it was a large area, so they did probably from like my elbow down to my wrist, and that's why I think I reacted to it because it was too much at once. Mm -hmm. And there was like there was like no room to breathe. So what happened was I got these giant bubbles, um, all oh. over my all oh, dude. It looked like I don't even know like the fucking Toxic Avenger or something, dude. It was all wow. these bubbles all over my arm. It was fucking crazy. They had to cut all of them open. And it didn't you hurt. It didn't hurt to cut them open because it was like relieving. It was so much pressure build up. Uh, so needless to say, I never did that again. I was like, I and I had the balls too. I was like, can I have my money back? <laughs> like, I feel like I got nothing out of this. And, um, you, you know, like I'm a fucking mutant now. So, but they didn't give me my money back. And then you turned into a superhero. Yeah, yeah, right. I wish. Chris, with yours, did did it remove the tattoos that you had that you, or are they still there? No, it like Mike said, it sucked. It, it's like I I got it, and then it was just like a, it looked like a a third degree burn, mm, and then when okay. the burn healed, the ink was just still there. Um, so I just ended up having it covered. But the the problem with the tattoo removal, I think it's like it's definitely progressed like now oh, it's yeah definitely like, fucking awesome but i got this done in like 2006 or yeah. seven yeah. Um, okay but they say it takes like you know four sessions a year for like three years yeah. I'd, i've never committed to any process over a three-year period <laughs> at all so it's like <laughs> no way right right and yes it uh it was it was I don't know. It was a crazy experience and I would never do it again, but it's definitely, it definitely has to be better now. Like I did it around the same time. It was probably like 2005, 2006. Yeah. It was a new thing. Now they have yeah. like wireless <laughs> handheld lasers and it's like some beautiful woman. It probably doesn't, right. like, it probably feels good. It's right. like <laughs> whatever. And actually it's funny. I, um, it, it's maybe a little offensive, but I was in a, like a corner store and, um, this guy, he had a bunch of tattoos that you could kind of faintly see and mm -hmm. like some pretty menacing ones, but they were like gone. And he like gave me a card to a tattoo removal place, but it was for free. And he was like, and at the place was called like, like God's young homies or something like right. it was for like, and he was like, he's like, yeah, it's free. It's like, we're just trying to get people like out of gangs and yeah. you know and like out of print like, like if they've done prison time we want you to like get back into society and i was like i was like i'm okay like do i look like that to you but i mean it's cool it's free so but i was gonna say you or i all you have to do in um you know southern california is just say i just got out of prison i want to get this job at like the grocery store and they'll right. just snap this shit for free so right something to yes. think about and i've heard about that and i was like at the time i was like well what can I do? You know, can I pretend I'm in a gang? You know, like, 
get some <laughs> get some like crazy name tattooed on me or or whatever and see if i can get yeah. this for free you know but yeah it was just black Mike, i feel like a mafia would be a little more uh, believable for you yeah i'm yeah, more gang, i'm more gang like yep i'll get like a bada bing tattoo <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like on your knuckles or, or something <laughs> yeah oh shit um or a pimp or a pimp yeah i'll take it i'll take it, it. Pimp. Uh, i feel man. like you'd be a you'd be a pimp for like guys though i feel like yeah yeah you wouldn't you wouldn't do women yeah no. i'm too like i i'm like i put women on a pedestal in a way you know like i'm like yeah i treat them i treat them way too nice uh, well no just just the right amount of nice i guess <laughs> but yeah i can see you like being a pimp for like <laughs> like mark Wahlberg and leo from like the basketball diaries <laughs> <laughs> like tween uh twinks is that what they're called yeah like like kind of like they live in like the east village they got like a heroin mm. problem but they're like kind of pretty guys i could see it yeah yeah because i'd be uh, you know maybe i'd help them out too be like you know kick the heroin and do this you know Start on start on OnlyFans, yeah. give them haircuts, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's what this basement's for, dude. It's gonna be like your stable. I'm into it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I may hey, I may even move the podcast down there. Who knows? Because wow. this cause well, this sucks here because there's no like I have an AC in here, but um mm. it's not insulated. So yeah. You could pump this thing all day. It's still probably 80 degrees in here right now or or more. I can, yeah, I can't function in heat like that. Yeah, That's and in the winter time, or the winter time, forget it in here. It's freezing. <laughs> yeah, I'm out so here and like I'm on the podcast and fucking hooded sweatshirt and a hat. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. Um. So when did we do the? I put, well, I put the podcast out today, Sarah. Um. Oh, you did. Nice. Yes, I put it out today. But when did we? When did we do that? I'm I'm so lost on time. I think last Friday friday yeah that's right it was friday friday and um you know we were just bullshitting but it came out it came out pretty funny and we were talking about memorable like school experiences so i'd really like to hear chris's if he's got any <laughs> yeah sure um, <laughs> no it, it's funny because uh i guess that's not People use the word ironic wrong all the time. I catch myself doing it. it that's not ironic. It's just a coincidental uh, thing. But but yesterday I did the, I read the audio for the book, uh, which was really hard, actually. Um, really? Yeah, because you don't realize how much you, you fuck up when you're reading out loud or aloud. Mm -hmm. um, just little, you know, you don't realize like cadence and stuff with like commas and question marks and just like right. subtle things you have to do and you have to sound good and then you say one thing wrong and then uh i it took me three hours so imagine reading for three hours out loud i was right. i was like dying but anyways there's a, a long story in there about a school memory so i'm pretty fresh with it so all right i'm glad this this turned out great uh, <laughs> um for, for whatever reason, I I think it's, uh, I went to a Montessori. Do you know what this is? Yes. Okay. Yep. So it's, it's kind of, I would say it's a better yeah. version of school. Yes, um, definitely. <laughs> and at lunch, they had a popcorn machine, like, like an old one that'd be like, at, like outside at a fair or something on the wheels, you know? Yeah. Um, which was, I mean, holy shit, how cool is that, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, it was great for the kids, you know. I think it was mostly good for the crows. The crows <laughs> were everywhere because the kids usually were just throwing at each other and all that. But um, I was moving around a lot as a youth, you know, and I was really poor. So I'd go to school in, like, women's sweatpants or something. And uh, it was just terrible. But my mom used to, like, have a, a big Ziploc bag full of quarters that she'd keep, like, in like a the kitchen like in a cupboard i don't know what, what it was for just who knows that's like some weird mom thing um yeah <laughs> but i fucking stole it uh because the popcorn was a quarter at school right. so i took the fucking quarter bag and i go to school with it and i'm like a king 
you yeah. know, because it's time for recess and the popcorn machine is cooking and you smell the butter and all this stuff. And I just stood by the side and I just paid for everybody's popcorn. And I told everybody, this is probably where I went wrong. Um, I said, I'll buy your popcorn, but you guys have to be my friends. Like I just said it out loud, like how like embarrassing. Right. So okay. I paid for everyone's popcorn and they fucking, they didn't hang out with me. They all just took the popcorn and left. And then I just stood there with that empty bag of change. And uh, one of the kids, though, I ended up beating up. <laughs> yeah. I, that it's, same it's day? Um, no, probably a couple days later. But he he was in class and the teacher was like, uh, this was, I was very young. This was probably like fucking you know like kin kindergarten first grade so, you know young yeah. young um and the teacher was playing some sort of game with words where where words sound like other words and um the teacher was saying something about uh like what do you call your grandmother like grandma grandma grandmother something like that and she was writing it all and this kid said uh graham cracker you know and everyone yeah. laughed she wrote graham cracker but this was the main kid who didn't have his part of the popcorn bargain with me and um when recess came i ran up and i shoved him on the ground and then i was kicking him in the ribs and i was saying graham cracker graham cracker graham cracker <laughs> oh, it's kicking him. um yeah that's one for you <laughs> oh my god that's awesome so yeah you're so the books when is the book coming out uh i think it's it's like been like printed it has like a barcode and and stuff like that but i think uh i i don't know like it could be four months or six months or something okay so everything takes forever dude forever yeah yeah well, i'm definitely looking forward to it even though i've seen i've seen it you know got some like mm -hmm. texts i got a book like a text of the book <laughs> nice and i read through it and you know it was, it was really cool i'm looking forward to uh seeing i'm looking forward to hearing it I actually like audiobooks, especially when they're read by like someone that I recognize the voice. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's much more visual because it takes me forever to read a fucking book. I mean, that, that I can read pretty quick, but um, I get much An more of a vivid nice. picture when I when I listen to it. So definitely yeah. think about that. I think it's kind of better. And you can like, I, I remember I, I did that with that book, Infinite Jest, that notoriously long book that people read to like seem intelligent and you if you do read that book i would say that you are pretty intelligent because it's hard right um, or you at least have a good attention span um but i was reading that and then also listening to it uh, you know what i'm saying yes so it was like i feel like if you you attack a book from the two angles it's like really great it, yeah. especially in a book like that where um it it really doesn't it's like written by someone who's so great at writing and they're writing in a way to like seem impressive to other writers. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's kind of like exhausting and annoying. Like if it's like a sentence, he has sentences that are two pages long. Right. You know what I mean? And it's, you feel like you're like panting when you're trying to read it, even in your brain voice. Uh, so to have someone do that work for you, you, it's like you're intelligent enough to process the information but you just, you've escaped all of the, you know, drudgery. So right. it's cool to do that. Right. Yeah. And I know exactly what you mean about um, like reading aloud and getting the like nuances right. Cause I've, you know, I've, as a joke, I tried like one of those uh, teleprompter tests. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can watch them on YouTube. Like you're like, you're a newscaster or something. Yeah. And, I've seen these. They're cool. And yeah. it's pretty fucking hard, man. <laughs> I couldn't keep it's up so with it. Hard. You know, you or could be like Joe Biden, dude. Remember when he was like <laughs> in line, repeat sentence. He like says the stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, so like, fuck, that's what it was like. And yeah. I was reading it and I was like, I'm not I'm not conveying the emotion of anything I'm saying. I'm just reading it as fast as I fucking possibly can. <laughs> I want to try this. It this sounds like yeah, a great board I, game. I actually did it on a podcast once. So we should we should we should do it one day. It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun. I think the fucking the hardest part about reading something aloud is when it like switches from like first to third person and stuff like that. So it's like, 
Um, so I could say, this isn't in the book, I'm just going to say something random, but as if I was reading it and I, I wanted the listener to be engaged, I could say, um, um, the phone rings, I picked up the phone, Mike was on the other end. How are you doing, buddy? Mike asked. You know, like, <laughs> when you like go with, like when you embody the other person, yes. how are you doing, buddy? It's, you have to like, you don't want to like do an impression of them, but you sort of have to like wiggle your voice a little to like, so you can hear Yes. That was what was fucking with me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I get the uh, the words that are spelled the same but pronounced differently. Mm -hmm. I Now, I forget what, now I don't even know what they are, but like I, when I read out loud, I always say whatever words those are wrong. Right, right. But are you talking I, about, I are you talking about like a word like, like I drink from a, I can drink from a can, like that kind of word? well or like there and there they are there yeah probably more like, like there that. and there and then like just like if it's pronounced like i would even even though it's not spelled the same i would probably say dessert instead of does like that kind of i'm just kind of dumb though but um <laughs> that's dumb. my that's my reading out loud uh phobia and it's <laughs> i always yeah. fuck it up somehow I, 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 yeah. I, I understand what you're saying because because if, if I were to say to you like how dare you desert your family that would be a lot <laughs> different than me saying would you like some dessert it's yeah. like you need to fucking sell the word differently I, yeah. I hear that that's funny how dare you desert <laughs> yeah that's, that's yeah. great how, you, how dare you desert well yeah. yeah how do you do it like you say does do you want some dessert how dare you desert your family <laughs> That's crazy. You you know a good thing about the the word dessert though, is that desert has one s as in you know sand, yeah. but dessert has two. And I always remember that because you have it after dinner, so dinner after dinner, so it's two. Right. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah, I do that too. I do that. I'm really good at. I I butcher the uh, English language speaking at, you know, a lot of the time, especially doing this kind of <laughs> shit. I'm like duh, 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 all the time. But I'm really good at spelling. Like I can spell fucking almost anything, I think. Like, mm. I mean, not like some crazy word that nobody uses ever. I think it's A N Y T H I N G, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like to... Yes. Okay. I can spell I can spell that word too. Um, but yeah, people call me. Like, I mean, maybe not as much anymore with Google and shit like that. But people used to call me, like, how do you spell this? My wife. She's an she has a mass double master's degree, and she asks me how to spell shit. You know how good that makes me feel. <laughs> it's yeah. like it's like one intellectual skill that I really have. Um, so yeah, but but I do that. I, I compare things or I make my own shit up in my own head to remember how to spell it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you're using like mnemonic devices. Yes. So like such as um, like restaurant. That's like a very awkward word to spell. But I always just think of rest. Yep. Australia, A U, yep. and then rant. Yeah. Like rest, Australia, rant. Yep. Rest, all wrong. Yeah. Because it I sounds, almost, I don't like it. Right. And I almost say it in my head like it's spelled. Me like, too. Like restaurant. I'll say rest, tour, rant. And then I'll just remember how to spell it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do the same thing. I, I remember <laughs> being younger. I had trouble spelling the word beautiful. And I'd be like, B E R beautiful. Like I would just yeah, like say it almost like I had like a tick. Yeah. I say it in my head, thank God. But um, yeah, those <laughs> little tricks are, uh, I think that that's, it, it seems like it'd be a sign of a lack of intelligence. But if you listen to any like mathematician or even like a genius who can like recite pi, they have some very bizarre sort of like juvenile tactic on how they get to the right answer. Right. You know, and so right. I think that is a, that's a sign of intelligence because you're, you're problem solving on the spot. Yes. You know? Yeah. I do the same thing with math. Like I'm not great at math, but I can add two numbers together really quickly by just rounding them up. Like let's yeah. say let's say 153 plus 202, you know? I take off the 3 and the 2 and I add those together. And then yeah, I add the 5. The 5. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that type, that type of shit is is fun because if you really okay. yeah, like looked at like 77 and 21, how like what is that if you just looked at the two you're like I would never no, right. you know what I mean. Just right. add seven to two, and then it, it, it's 
it, it can be kind of easy that way but um i i feel like teachers would probably hate that kind of shit yeah they do they do you know yes yeah. and that's why i did so poorly in, in classes like math and things like that because but then you'd go out to the to the hallway and you'd solve equations when no one was looking <laughs> yeah that's, he actually he actually had to sit in the hallway so he never got to be with the rest of the class <laughs> i <never> did <laughs> I did in second grade and second grade. I was put out in the hallway for the entire year because I was too distracting to all the little kitties trying to learn. I was just oh, trying so to make, they weren't uh, even doing it to you. They were doing it to like save the rest of the kids. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was fucked up actually, man. I think they would never be able to get away with that now. No way. Mm. No, um, I, I definitely remember that, that shit. Like, um, in-house suspension mm -hmm. yeah we were talking about that too yeah. it was weird i got put in one it was like a it was like cubicles yeah you know what i mean so it'd be like me and steve raniero and like todd jensen and there was like for some reason there was posters in the cubicle one big poster and uh i just had abbey road in mind and i don't like the beatles or that cover or anything um and I just would stare at it for like the whole the whole day. Yeah. It was just fucking horrible. So when I see that record, I'm just like, no. Yeah, that's that's a torture in a way, you know. Um, I remember yeah. having detention, and it was like we would just sit there. So it would be after school. Mm -hmm. uh, school ends at three fifteen. I have to go sit in a classroom for another forty five minutes, whatever it was, and just sit there. And the guy would stand up front and just be like, "If you guys got homework to do, you can do it. Otherwise, just sit here." And I didn't that's fucking, crazy man it's, i didn't do yeah, anything it's like, <laughs> it, it's like a beautiful kind of i mean what's his name uh john uh he, he breakfast club john hughes yes. yeah john hughes yeah pretty in pink 16 candles that guy's great but it's so funny is that like the real beauty of that movie is just sort of like the character development like and the insanity of everyone just kind of sitting in that room it's like you got the jock and then the one kid's like archetype he puts his boots up on the chair the one girl's doing the fucking dandruff on the drawing and then the nerd is doing his work and it's like that's sort of funny man it's like people's humanity probably really shines like when you put a bunch of kids in a room yeah they're like doing the thing it's funny yeah absolutely and they do that now with like modern reality television they just take six seven people and throw them in a house together and see what happens <laughs> like yeah i don't really watch a lot of it but I, I i've seen it and it's it's like this weird social experiment where it's like let's see what's going to happen and two hours yeah. in and they're like fighting each other you know or, or someone always gets drunk and then they start like finger banging in the hot tub <laughs> yeah yeah like instantly <laughs> yeah. instantly it's instantly. crazy instantly. Start no, finger banging the, the holes in the hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't start finger banging a hot tub. The actual the hot like, tub. Oh, jacuzzi! <laughs> I'm gonna stick my fingers for that. Bubbles yeah, are coming out. <laughs> do you guys think that? Um, do you think that we would be better off without online dating, or is that how you guys met? Who you're with, or no? Or I, I did not meet uh, my wife like that. No, um, we've been married 13 years this year. And I don't think that really existed yet. Like maybe MySpace or like Facebook, but like Tinder and, and Match and all that stuff didn't exist yet. Um, but I personally think it's really strange. But that's not what I know. I know going out to bars and meeting people. So yeah, I, right. I can't judge it in that way. If people, if that's how it is now, that's how it is. Um, but Chris, what about you? That's a good question. It is a really good question. <laughs> I find it to be a bit... Um... I don't know sort of like like kind of bad you know uh, that's not I, because i think that it's just the intention is so clear you know mm -hmm. and uh i think people can sort of masquerade on on these kind of formats and 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 write in their bio like just here to meet new people or like whatever put like a photo of you with a dog be like i like animals like i'm mm -hmm. cool like you could do whatever you want but we all know what it is right. and uh and i just think that that's that's all right but at the same time it's like you're uh you're like shopping you know because you and you're seeing the photo so then there's instantly like 
this like visual judgment it's like okay well you know i don't like like her shoulders are weird or i don't like people <laughs> with this kind of hair and it's just right. it's just kind of fucked up and and i don't think that um i mean sure there's going to be like exceptions like people fall in love on these things but um there's something about it just seems kind of off-putting to me um because it's like I, I met my wife uh sort of digitally but it was like a friend of mine sent a, a ralph lauren double rl like uh video like lookbook or something mm-hmm. and maxine had a song on it and i was like oh who did that music and then he like sent me her page her instagram page and i just said like hey my friend showed me this like cool music but my intentions were i want to marry her you know Mm -hmm. so but at least there was that wall of like i saw something creative and it was through a friend and and something like that i wasn't just like don't like this one don't like this one i like that one so yeah the answer is no i think it's great music bad shoulders yeah Yeah, exactly (laughs) exactly but then on, on the other hand too is like we didn't we said we it's because of the context we said okay well i'll be in la maybe maybe we can meet you know but she had a boyfriend and obviously that doesn't matter but like uh (laughs) you know we met and you know she's playing guitar i'm drinking baileys you know thinking i could scare her away with that because it was like eight in the morning uh but we weren't like let's meet up because i like your picture and i want to fuck right you know (laughs) right yeah Oh, yeah, you saved that for in person. Yeah, when I saw her in person, I was like, "Hey, nice to meet you. I want to fuck." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. And you know what? People can be so misleading online. You know, hence catfish. I mean, there's a whole fucking show about it. You know, mm-hmm. um, even if even if it's not a different person, people still they'll put pictures of themselves ten years ago. Right. And let's be honest. You know, what's the first thing? anyone's attracted to is somebody's looks there unless unless you're talking on like a chat room or something and you guys are connecting you don't know they you know you don't know what the other person looks like or whatever it is Mm -hmm. um but that doesn't happen anymore you everyone sees everybody now whether it's a dating app or in person (laughs) well the, the nice thing about something like instagram is that is gross as i feel saying this it's uh there is a large degree of personality that can be conveyed on that format. It's like, you can like, you can just see how they curate it. Be like, okay, this person's like highly artistic. They're very, Mm -hmm. they're like a severe empath because they're constantly posting about other people's problems and, Mm -hmm. and it was like, Oh, they're really funny or they have a lot of friends or not that many friends. And you can like, you can essentially get like a full personality, you know, from something like that. And, I don't think you can from a, a dating app necessarily because it's just they're just going to write whatever they want to write but right. on instagram you can totally you can feel it out because you can also um you can see how they interact with people like under their pictures the comments you can see who they follow yep. who they don't follow i mean and that would probably require like you being a total weirdo if you wanted to like <laughs> check someone out but the point is is you can is because people spend so much goddamn time on that thing that you can see exactly who someone is. Sure. Yeah. yeah. No, I could definitely see that. Sarah, what do you think? What do you what do you think about the the oh, modern God. dating scene? You know, it's like you're meeting people you never would have met ever because Right. Yes. But <laughs> were you ever supposed to meet them in the first place exactly like was that a good thing or was that a bad thing i've done it yeah um but then my instagram if you look at all the accounts i follow it's literally all like self-help and then it's just like (laughs) girl you got today (laughs) it's all seriously you're a 10 yeah (laughs) that's awesome yeah yeah so if you were gonna look at mine you'd be like wait i guess she plays music sometimes she's got a lot of cats but then she like needs a lot of positive affirmations yeah i I think that that would be true like a true representation of you or is it sort of like a comic version like an exaggeration i think i should 
have separated like a personal account from a music account. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cuz it Thanks. doesn't look, it doesn't look cool. I mean <laughs> it's <just laughs> all it literally is all it's all like psychics and therapists and just like <laughs> clothes. So <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, listen, I my algorithm, I trick my algorithm because I'm so I'm like schizophrenic when it comes to things. I I watch and listen to so many different things that my it doesn't know what to even show me half the time. Sometimes it it like brings up ads for things I would never buy in a million years, but it thinks mm. that if I like this certain thing and this certain thing together, that it would make this, and it, it never does. It's my my all my social media is very strange. <laughs> Especially TikTok. TikTok is the most schizophrenic. Are you on TikTok, Mike? Yeah. What yeah. about you, Chris? Um, I have one. I have one, but I do, I have not set it up. I've never done it. Is it worth it or? Oh man. <laughs> I don't know. I I've been reading a lot of stuff about um, that. It's like it's sort of like weaponized against America to like make us dumb and like waste our time and collect our data. And if you actually, I mean, it sounds like conspiracy, like theory 101, but it, it's, uh, if you actually look it up, like the Department of like Defense, like in, in the United States has been like releasing documents and like trying to like push it up to like the Supreme Court to get TikTok shut down. Like it's like yeah. an actual thing um, that it's, uh, that they're they're stealing people's data and stuff like that and then yeah. i think the creepiest part is the amount of time people waste on that app and doing stupid things and, and humiliating themselves and uh ignoring their children or like i see a lot of women with like children with like disabilities and they're like holding the kid up yeah and like and it's like you know i don't i don't think the child like consented to like be like in your little like game you know um, so I just think it's making people fucked up. And uh, that's why I just have never uh, set mine up is because of yeah. that <laughs> whole scary thing. Well, so my answer is, unless you think you need it for your career, I just wouldn't do it. Yeah. See, I mean, I fly under the radar there. I don't get any attention. But it's such a, it's a very you, everything you just said is like totally accurate because it's such a strange app. Like it knows you. It starts to get to know you after a while and what you stop on it'll watch what you stop on you know what i mean like it's mm. just swiping through it'll be like oh, okay you like this you like this and it, that's what it gives you like my tiktok and my wife's tiktok are two completely different fucking worlds mine is all music movies twerking asses <laughs> and hers <laughs> hers is um nature and flowers and turtles it knows you. It gets to know you. It's very fucking weird. I and thought you were going to say nature and flowers and twerking asses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Maybe, Turtles maybe. Um, but yeah. Oh, it... Guys, I'm going to pause my painting for one second. I'll be right back. You, okay. Y'all okay. keep going. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, TikTok is very, very strange. Um I don't like it sometimes because there'll be that kind of thing. You go on like the live feeds yeah, and you'll see like some woman in like a third world country <laughs> holding her baby, like asking for money. And you're like, weird. Ooh. it's just, it's yeah. just such a weird, it has such a weird dark side to it. And, you know, they pretend to be like holier than thou as far as like not showing nudity, but it's so close to nudity that it might as well be yeah you know, know and you don't know how old these girls are they can be like fucking 15 you you, you have no idea mm-hmm. and yeah i mean listen if you got a good song there's one positive thing i can say about tiktok if you got a good song you want people to hear that is the number one promotion tool in the world <laughs> it is like hands down like bands That's have been true. bands have been made out of tiktok that band dirty <laughs> they came from tiktok Oh, they did, um, didn't they? Yeah. Um, and I've seen a bunch of other people blow up to the point where they're not selling stadiums, but they're they're touring the country and they're selling records. Um, you see, well, that's terrible. Like, 
I, I mean, I'm such a pushover because as soon as you, you dangle that carrot, I'm like, well, maybe TikTok, I could check it out. <laughs> I mean, it's... I've, I've thought about like, what if you did, um, sorry, but what if you did, okay, so it's like, I don't need to, I don't need to dance or like own like a dog with three legs or like be like, you ever put French fries on a burger and like have like that Kate Bush song playing? I don't need to do any of that. <laughs> yeah. I could just like, maybe I could just film something that I thought was sort of avant-garde or on brand or like not totally, you know, embarrassing and then just put my own song on it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Would, I don't know if that worked though. People would just be like, why is he filming like, like, like an incense burning or something like that. Right. You know? Right. But you know what, what I found out from that, like you can make videos till you're blue in the face, but if you don't have something that's going to catch on, you're wasting your time. But, right. if you, but if you do have something like all of a sudden you put a video up and it's got 30,000 views or likes people do that same thing over and over again. Well, what do you think what people want? I don't know. Like Patrick Dampier is on there. Mm -hmm. He's on there. I see him sometimes. And like he put up a, a clip of one of his music videos and it looks like it kind of caught on, but then mm -hmm. like he had like thousands of, of views, but then I'll put something up like, um, you know, him saying something or whatever, and it gets nothing. It, it's really weird. And I tried the same thing too with my account. Like nobody looks at my podcast videos. They don't give a fuck. First of all, they're too long. They're too long. Even as a trailer. Can you tell us? Three, three or four yeah, minutes. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Chris and I have no, no. to our other podcast. I videos. mean, on TikTok, you know, it's like a three or four minute video and people don't have that attention span on TikTok because they're like, you can do yeah. 10 minutes, but people want tw 20 seconds. That's all they want. Um, so you got to you got to find a way to get to the point quick and have something catchy. And yeah. I, have, I can't figure out how to do it now. I've sent you videos, Chris, of like squirrels in my backyard doing crazy shit. Those I get like th those get thousands of views. Thousands Jesus. of views. Meanwhile, okay, so squirrels is a good loophole. I remember that. <laughs> squirrels is a good loophole. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, I have like an awesome interview with fucking Matt Hoffman or something, and it gets like two hundred likes or whatever. It's yeah, it's so strange. I, I don't I always... know. I've always done the wrong shit. You know what I mean? Like I love doing this. Yeah. But like the kid opening xboxes on youtube is a billionaire you know like i i don't because i don't want to do that i think it's stupid <laughs> yeah it's funny it's, it, <laughs> I, I just wish there wasn't such a degree of like compromise when it came to artwork uh and then in promotion in the digital world because yeah it's it's almost like you have to compromise what you actually do to promote it which mm -hmm. is like it's like kind of like a oxymoron or, or something it's like well i made this beautiful song and it's about you know the death of a friend or addiction and it, it's like super serious but if i ha i have to like you know be like the naked cowboy in times square mm -hmm. on tiktok for you to hear it and it completely doesn't even match with the world i'm trying to create right and and that's what makes it sort of dangerous i think Right. You know? Yeah. No, it's, it, it's almost like you're selling out yourself. Like mm -hmm. you're not getting, you know, some, a lot of times artists get a big record deal and they, you know, sell out or whatever, and their sound changes and their whole vibe changes. And the fans are like, ah, oh, this kind of sucks. You're actually right. doing it to yourself without the paycheck. <laughs> so yeah, oh. it's very weird. Yeah. It's, it's scary. Mm -hmm. I, you know what I, I, I really wish is that I sort of had, someone to like take me under their tiktok wing like <laughs> like i know i know you know like bonnie prince billy obviously yeah. um like like if he had one like i would like try to copy his because you know his would be so weird and artistic but like sort of funny but like this black humor sardonic humor almost right. like he's like making fun of it at the same time i just need to see some madman genius or mad woman genius sort of run with it and then i'll i'll be like that's how you do it i just don't feel like right. blazing the trail i don't know if i am capable yeah no i i totally get what you're saying and it's weird though because there's so many layers to it like i said before it it gets to know you so mm -hmm. your your following essentially would find you just by default because they're already kind of they already are yeah. targeted 
towards the vibe you are. So it makes it sound scary. It is. It is <laughs> fucking scary. They'll find you. <laughs> They'll find you. <laughs> no, please don't. It's funny what comes up in my, you know, in my feed. It's like, oh wow, yeah, I do like all of this shit that's on here, you know. And if yeah. I if something comes up that I don't like, I skip it really quick, and they never show it to me again. It's, and it's almost like you don't even have to make that effort. You're skipping it because you'd skip it, right? So it's got it. Just reminds me of like. <laughs> like a just like rats you know it's like yeah give the rat cocaine give the rat yeah. food like and like they just decide what the rat wants it's so fucking true fucking <laughs> hell man so true who's really running is. tiktok dude and i think about this shit all the time too and i'm like almost ashamed of myself like i'm like why am i even on this fucking thing because you fall into a hole they'll mm-hmm. be watching it for two hours before you even realize you've been watching it you know that in china it shuts off at 10 p.m no shit see china see china knows what what's up yeah they yeah. they got it together moving. yeah <laughs> they, they really do have it together like you can still have your you know i mean they, they of course every place has its fucked up things but like you could still enjoy yourself and have a good time but it doesn't need to be excess to the point where you're like stupid like too yeah. much too much of anything can ruin your life too much porn could make you fucking stupid honestly Mm-hmm. you know what i mean I everything has to be uh, yeah <laughs> yeah come on dude everything well no everything in moderation i think you know i think when it's too yeah. much too much of anything is no good i actually stopped looking at pornography i, I feel better yeah yeah i think yeah i think i told you that once it's like mike one... hasn't did you just hear how guilty he is it's like, <laughs> yeah good, good job, yeah. Man. <laughs> wait no. why did you want to stop watching or looking at it um i heard uh well, I I did this before I heard this, but I heard um, J- Jordan Peterson. He's highly hated, you know, clinical psychologist and like speaker, but whatever. Uh, he said that um, he said that at any given point, a man can look at more beautiful naked women, like at any time, than throughout all of history. And he said, "Do you think that that doesn't do something to you? You know what I mean?" And mm-hmm. a meaning like it takes away your drive to create meaningful relationships with women or like it could like destroy like the, the family unit or, or just like, like a, a, a real like waterfall of consequence um, and just general like mental health or like not being excited by your sexual partner because there's not three of them or, you know, like it just, there, there must be a consequence to just being bludgeoned with, with that like dicks and boobs and pussies everywhere it's gonna <laughs> fucking fry the, the mainframe yeah. um and i just noticed that where it's like uh, i don't know i guess the word is like you just become like desensitized and mm. um and then i started to think about you know some maybe some of the positions people were in that why they had to do that job and i'm not saying that every woman who does pornography is like like you know in despair i mean some women are just like maybe progressive and they're they're owning their sexuality and their body and and maybe they're putting themselves through college maybe they're fucking not it's not my business so i'm not condemning all of them but then i started to think what about the women who really didn't didn't want to do it and they then like years later they're like ashamed of it and they're like you know just all around it just sort of <laughs> seemed bad i guess yeah, and you know, it's really just females that are affected by it in that in that way in the industry, mm-hmm. um, and they don't have like a long shelf life. It's like they do it for a couple of years and then they're like thrown away in a way, you know. Yeah. And but that's always going to stick. You're always going to unless you're like the top porn star, which is usually one a generation, you know. That's going to stick yeah. with you forever. Like Tracy you, Lords, Jenna Jameson. Yeah. And then um, I just like, name off like 50 of them. Um, <laughs> you know, like, and there's, there's a couple like Sasha Gray. Yeah. She, she did like, you know, real severe pornography, you yeah. know, like on a, she's in a warehouse, like strapped to a machine. And there's like 15 guys. I mean, gnarly, oh. like champagne yeah. glasses full of semen, just yeah. wild. But then <laughs> she just like, 
she started hanging out with like the dudes from Vice magazine, was in a couple indie movies. Yeah. And she and people are just like, oh, like you're cool. You can yeah. like you can just sort of be like a weird like Chloe Seventy now or whatever. I right. just don't know how to um you know what I mean. Yeah. Um it's funny. Some some women have like escaped it like as of recently, which yes. is cool. But um But it's but it's super rare. And yeah. I think the way they that people uh women escape it as well is the culture has kind of clashed like mm -hmm. i feel like it's like porn's become more normalized like yeah. fucking kids watch it you know and i mean don't get me wrong when i was 15 i would look for any fucking thing i could you know what i mean but now it's so easy you can fucking look at it on your phone you, know, you can well, the, yeah literally the a bit is a bit <laughs> weird dude i mean because imagine yeah. like Let's say you had this phone when you're 15. Anytime someone, anytime that you were left alone in a room, mm -hmm. you would look at it. Like, let's say you're, right. you'd be in like fucking in, in like freshman year of high school asking for the hall pass so you can go do, you know what, you know? Right. I mean, it just, yeah. the, the, it's just a little bit insane to me. Um, you know, but I, I'll, go ahead. I'll, I'll, <laughs> you. All right. Yeah, I remember like, you know, my friend had the Playboy channel, right? Nice. And he would tape, you know, like an hour of the Playboy channel and like <laughs> give him I'd give him 10 bucks for that fucking thing. You know what I mean? Like this is That's this is so cool. all this is all I got, you know? Or yeah, yeah I can go through dad's closet. Or uh, I remember my friend printed out like a picture. It took like four hours <laughs> to print it out because it was so the technology just wasn't there. Of like a girl with a with like a wet bathing suit, you know, like um like a wet t shirt contest, whatever. Yeah, I like kept the piece of paper, like it was something you know incredible, you know. I think uh, one of the most sinister <laughs> like uh, pornographic materials I ever stumbled upon was um I won't say who it was, but someone in my family that I had lived with briefly worked at a photo developing store where you used mm. to develop photos, and she would make duplicates of of new you know naked women or sexual acts and i went under his bed one time and he had a shoe box of all of these pictures of just like all the women from around town that sent in the stuff and i was like whoa like is you know is this per is he like a killer or something you know i was like this is crazy but you know i took like a handful of them and i kept them in my pillow yeah <laughs> <laughs> No, no yeah. man, that's it, it's crazy, and and that's like modern pornography is is actually really fucking creepy. Like if you've seen any of it, it's all like, like step brother, step yeah, steps to siblings, and mm -hmm. you know what is automatically that makes me think like, all right, it's pedophilia in a way. You know, like this fifty year old guy wants to be with this eighteen year old girl, and I know that's legal, but it's still fucking disgusting. And that's yeah. the that's the intention of the whole thing is to make it look like that, or to make someone think like that. Like this is what I'm trying to portray. And well, honestly, it's kind of gross. It's like, well, what? it's it's weird. <laughs> I I I heard this on a different podcast. I I forget who it was. It doesn't matter. But they were just saying like, where's the like, where's the line? Like mm. that like. Cause it's like, we just like keep pushing it and pushing it. Cause if right. you've seen like pornography from like, you know, the sixties, even, even black and white and stuff is like pretty, I mean, this is just standard fornication. Right? right. And then now it's like, it's like, and then it all of a sudden it's like, it's the plumber, the pizza delivery boy. And then now it's like, you know, your brother, it's like, what the fuck? Like, what's, what, where do you go? Like, <laughs> right. I, I just feel like, it, and that's just like evident in our entire culture. It's like, what's the next porn what's the next tiktok what's the next phone i feel like we're sort of capped out you know yeah and, uh, yeah i think we're all probably tired and that's the reason why i stopped looking at that shit and that's the reason why i stopped like you know using drugs or eating certain types of food because i'm just like i'm just like full throttle dude like like either i'm just gonna i'm just gonna fucking die or or just become like just numb or something and uh mm -hmm. I think you just sort of have to scale back and be yeah. like nudity is the person who lives with me, who I love. Right. Um, I'm going to eat clean foods. I'm, I'm not going to watch, you know, ISIS videos. I'm going to watch like a Bill Murray movie, you know, just tone it all fucking back. You know? Yeah, absolutely. No, I totally agree with that. You know, it's like, 
like I was saying before, moderation, you know, or even like yeah. completely eliminating something that's just kind of poison to you, you know? I mean, we've all done it in ways, you know, it's like, you got to get rid of that, the negative stuff sometimes. And you don't realize it, that your everyday normal, the things that you think are normal could be killing you really quick. <laughs> you yeah, know? I, th I think they do. And I, I feel like at least I realized when I was consuming everything I wanted to and doing everything I wanted to all day long, you know, because I don't have a job, just music. So it's like I could say, oh, I just want to fucking do anything today. But like I was really just I became sort of miserable. And um, there's this Twilight Zone episode where this uh, mobster guy, he'd like this, Mike, he <laughs> he dies and um, he dies in a shootout. And he wakes up in like this beautiful hotel with all these women and all this food. And there's a casino on site and he just wins every time. And every woman wants him. And there's just like, he's like, I want a steak. And then boom, a steak appears. What they tell you at the end of the episode is that he's in hell. Right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I think that, I think yeah. that's it, man. That's, that's it. it. That's so true. That's so true. Um, so Sarah, Chris, man, what? you know what? I got to say something real quick. This is this is cool for me right now, man. These are like two of like my top ten artists. I'm sandwiched in between both of you, and uh, that's so sweet. You know, if someone would have told nice me, that, if someone would have told me that ten years ago, like you'd be talking to, you know, Chris and Sarah on the computer, I would be like, first of all, that's not that's never going to happen. The computer won't allow us to talk like this. And uh, <laughs> how am I going to meet those two people and have them together? It's, it's impossible. But here we are. Oh, love man. it. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, cool. Um, and this was, uh, this was a lot of fun. Sarah, do you have anything else you want to talk about? I, uh, <laughs> Chris, I know you had sent me a song, and I'm sorry I've been kind of flaky, but mm -hmm. well, I you're, think you're that a new mom, you haven't been flaky, you're busy. I am a new mom. Congratulations. I, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, I would yeah, love congrats. to do something musical with you. Yeah, you too. I I uh I didn't take any offense to that. I I'm so like I have so many projects always in my head I want to do and it's like I I just I feel like when they happen is like fine. Like whenever it happens, it's when it's supposed to happen. So um yeah, on, I mean just take your time. It could be in 2 years or it could be in 3 months. It's 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 cool, you know. Okay. Yeah, I'll yeah, try. I'll, I'd like to make it happen sooner than that, just because um, we have the ability to. Right. And yeah, I it's, it's uh, so easy these days, man. I, I don't think any any of the sort of musical uh, collaborations I've done with people, you know, even some high level people, I've never even been in the same room with them. It's almost just like standard now. So it's like, there is no reason not to do it i mean you can do it like uh i'm pretty sure i I made a video with will oldham i made it on my phone he made it on his phone like we just did it with fucking iphones and, and he never left kentucky you know that's hilarious yeah so you can pretty much you know we could like all three like open a fucking pizzeria right now like just from <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah no that sounds good um i can't wait to hear that at that when that happens, I'm not gonna say if when that happens. Yeah. It's um, be nice. Trying to think what else. Oh, Chris, remember we were talking about well, you, you brought this up. Um, rap songs. Like they uh -huh. all are about just being the best rap song, but the song's about nothing. Yeah, the song's right? about the song. Right. It's, it's like we're yeah. the best, you know, this and that. So yeah. I, I I think I'm gonna start doing that with this podcast. I'm just gonna every episode you're like, <laughs> this is the best podcast, you know, and that's it. Like <laughs> Just talk about Maybe. how great it is and then, you know, end it. Take it till you make it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. You know, the first time I heard that phrase, I'll never forget it, is because this guy in Boston, he walked up to me in a beautiful suit and he asked me if I had any change. And I go, I was like, what do you mean, man? Like, <laughs> I, I, you're in a suit, you know? And I was wearing some like <laughs> punk rock thing. And he was like, he's like, I'm homeless. Fake it till you make it. I was like, wow, it's great. Wow. Yeah. You know, I see that a lot here. There's like, um, I mean, I'm in the suburbs here, but when you go outside a little bit, you, you see homeless people and 
like they get in their car when they're done and go home. Like kidding. they're not they're not actually homeless. They're like people take mm. like video of them and stuff. They take video of them um at the end of the exit, begging for money. They get a bunch of money, they get in their car and they they follow them home. They like it's put like, their crutches in the trunk, yeah. Yeah, I forget what movie that was. It was an old movie, uh, one of the like Wayne's brothers movies. Maybe Don't Be a Menace or something like that. I, I think. Where yeah. the guy's sitting on the sidewalk and you know he looks homeless and he takes the blanket off and he's got a nice suit on. He gets him like a Lexus and drives off. <laughs> That's a it's fucking strange. real thing. It's crazy. I mean, I guess it's not that bad. Like it's not that bad. It, I mean, it's a way to make money. I mean, everybody's like, what if you're like a telemarketer or even, even me, I'm begging for people. I'm like, please buy this. I'll, I'll show you a song. Please buy it. I mean, <laughs> everybody's, everybody's well... kind of begging for money. And if the person agrees to give them the money, because I would argue that sitting I, I would rather like chop firewood all day than like sit on the side of a freeway. That sounds harder. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Not right. to be devil's advocate. I mean, I guess, but they're not, they're just begging for money on a fake, you know, on a fake basis. Like they actually mm. don't need it when other people may need it. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 it, I, I can mean, go many ways. Corrupt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Depends. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, I think that'll uh, that'll wrap it up. This was a good time. Yeah, it was cool. Sorry, we talked about TikTok and porno the whole time. <laughs> that's a, I, you know, that's what I want. That's what I want. I want to talk about. I want to talk about shit people can relate to, but not be like, <laughs> like po political or or, t you know, too much. Like sometimes, sometimes we go off the rails with that kind of stuff, and like, it's fine. But, well, I think I think the one of them was your fault because you're like, Chris, how you doing? What do you think about gun control? I was like, oh. <laughs> well, it was like literally the day after like one of those major shootings that happened. And yeah. it was like on our mind. Yeah. So I think we scrapped that one because it was there was a lot going on there, you know, and that's I mean, there's topics where it's like it doesn't matter what you say about it. You're yeah. going to be villainized from like either side. True. True. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure on this one, I'm going to get in trouble for saying that I don't think porno is great. People are going to be like, oh, like what? You know, think I'm like some like right wing Christian fundamentalist. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Who knows? Well, well, there you go. You know, they they can take it out of context now, but you just said it, you know. <laughs> right. Bingo. OK, well, it was right. great meeting you and um, good to see you again, Mike. Nice good to meet you, you as well. Okay. And uh, I love you guys. Yeah. Love you. Hey. <laughs> Love you All too. Right. Uh, who's gonna take us off this wall? Um, that's that's me. I'll be <laughs> <that>. help, help. <laughs> yeah, you're stuck here forever. This is a Black Mirror episode. I've got to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. See you later. Peace. Go to sleep. You know. <laughs>